uh, the easiest way for, for Russia to flex its muscle is to, to cut off the gas supplies to Europe in the winter. And then you know, that feeds through to an en energy shock. Um, mostly, uh, you know, many businesses will then see their cost of energy go up, and that will be, be bad in general. Now, some things may actually have an opportunity there. Some offshore uh, oil and gas development projects may become viable that weren't viable before. So you, know, you, you, have, you have pros and cons. But on the whole, I would obviously prefer to see Ukraine uh, situation contained to that region and not expand beyond it. Aileen, what's your take on this? We've talked about sort of general uncertainty, but also the specifics of, of sanctions and reactions yeah, to sanctions. Yeah, the difficulty uh, would be that we, of course, we do not have one government in, in the Eurozone. And uh, it, uh, a gas shock uh, would affect uh, different countries in a different matter. The countries in the East, of course, would be hurt hard and because they import almost all their gas from Russia and then follows Germany. But for instance, France and Italy are much less dependent. So what we would get is probably, again, uh, that it becomes very clear that there is no yeah, one policy in the Eurozone, a lot of diversion, a lot of conflicts between countries. And that, I think, is also a, a main risk. Do you think um, these kind of uh, problems on the, on the fringes of the region could deter some investors? Well, I think the, the way I see it, there are two scenarios. If, if Russia would, let's say, attack a NATO member, then we really have a major world crisis. And that I think, look, the whole thing stops. And that I think is an important nuance. I don't know what's going to happen. But in terms of the scenario of thinking, that will be disastrous, not only for private equity, but I think for uh, the world ge geopolitics as well as the overall economy. And that would basically make the whole thing uh, freeze and stand still.